Okay, okay, welcome to this first video looking at variable acceleration. We'll be using concepts which we've seen in pure one differentiation uh, to help us to analyze how um, we deal with a uh, context where acceleration is not constant, where we would normally have used SUVAT and said where acceleration is varying with time. Okay, so let's get started. So if acceleration is varying with time, then displacement velocity acceleration can be expressed in terms of time. So in essence, these three variables can be written as a function of time. Now, how can I use differentiation to get from one variable to another? Well, if you recall, in a displacement time graph, the gradient of a displacement time graph gives you velocity. And the gradient of a velocity time graph gives you acceleration. So if you think about this, differentiating uh, your displacement time graph, or sorry, your displacement time equation, displacement equation, that will give you velocity, okay? Gradient. And if you differentiate your velocity equation, that will give you acceleration, okay? And obviously, you can extend the idea further and think, okay, acceleration is also the second derivative of displacement. Now, let's have a look at this example here. Particle P is projected from a fixed point O on a straight line. Displacement X of P from O T after, you know, at T times T seconds after projection is given by this equation. Express velocity and acceleration of P in terms of T. Right, X equals 12 T squared minus T cubed meters. That is the displacement equation. Okay, now to get velocity, sorry, Ignore that. To get velocity, you have to differentiate your displacement equation. Remember, the displacement time of the gradient of that gives you velocity. Gradient is differentiation. And if you do that, you get 24t minus 3t squared. Okay. Right. Now, when you get to uh, the next concept, we need to find acceleration. Acceleration comes from differentiating your velocity equation okay and when you differentiate your velocity equation you'll get 24 minus 16. also you have to keep the units consistent okay so this is the velocity equation this is the acceleration equation okay right part b sketch the velocity time graph um, for the interval 0 to 10 seconds so I'm going to just draw, use my real pencil. Okay, so you've got zero, and we have to go all up to 12. Okay, um, so we have to sketch the velocity time graph. The velocity equation, the velocity equation looks like this, 24t minus 3t squared. That's clearly a negative quadratic. And if you factorise this quadratic, we get 3t, 8 minus t, okay, which means that the intercepts are, um, the x-intercepts are t equals 0 and t equals 8. And because it's a negative quadratic, it's going to have this shape here. Sorry about that guys, so I was um, I don't unfortunately don't have my rubber with me at the moment. Uh, but that would be how the shape would look like. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a better rub here. Okay. Right. I'll just make this a bit more consistent with a quadratic graph. Okay. Anyway, so that's our velocity time graph. Um, and because it's a negative quadratic, I would assume 
the maximum value of velocity will be at t equals 4 seconds. So that's t, that's 4 seconds. Okay, and if I was to put t equals 4 into that, I'll get a maximum velocity of 48. Okay, v meters per second, t seconds. Okay, and if I want to find the value of velocity when t equals 12, I'll put in 12 into the equation and I'll get a velocity value of minus 144 meters per second. Okay, so I'll extend this a little bit more. Okay, okay, so, so that, that is the velocity time graph. I do apologise for the um, sketching issues. Right, part C, find the speed of P in state's direction. Now, when they talk about speed, that's a straight line velocity. Okay, so what we need to do is use our velocity equation and substitute the values of T to see what we get for the value of v. So when I substitute t equals 6, I'll get a velocity of 36 meters per second. But in terms of the speed, that velocity is 36 meters per second. It's positive, so the speed is also 36 meters per second. And because it's positive, it means away from the starting position, okay, if you're taking the right to be positive. And if I substitute in t equals 9, I'll get a value of velocity to be minus 27 meters per second, which obviously means the speed is 27 meters per second, but it's not away from the origin, it's towards the origin because the value is negative. Right, now we're coming up to part D. Find the distance OP when P is instantaneously at rest. Now, when an object is instantaneously at rest, the velocity, okay, the um, uh, velocity is equal to zero. Okay, it sort of makes sense. When something's not moving for a split second in time, the velocity is equal to zero. And if you look at our graph here, the velocity is equal to zero, obviously at the starting point, but obviously at equals 8. So the distance OP occurs when t equals 8. And if you substitute t equals 8 into your displacement equation, you get 256 meters and that is the distance O to P when P is in stationary rest. Final question um, on example 1, find the value of t when P returns to 0. Now when an object returns to its starting point, what happens is the overall displacement is equal to zero. Okay? And therefore, we need to find the value of t when x is equal to zero. So we're going to make our x equation, which is 12t squared minus t cubed. We're going to make it equal to zero and solve. Factorize up the t squared. And you're going to get t equals zero and t equals second. Okay? which means that P returns to the origin after 12 seconds. Okay, because at zero seconds it's already started from the origin, 12 seconds later it's returned back to the origin. Now the velocity time graph doesn't show that, but if this was a displacement time graph, what you'd expect to see is the line or um, the curve coming back to the x-axis. Okay, so uh, that's example one uh, where we looked at using differentiation to find um, a few concepts and there are some questions at the bottom of the page you might want to have a go at. Look at example two. So in example two, the velocity of a particle traveling in a straight line is given by the following equation. Find the time when the particle is traveling at maximum velocity and then find the um, value of this maximum velocity. Right, so what we need to then understand is we've got a velocity equation, minus 3t squared plus 12t plus 4 meters per second. When an object is traveling at maximum velocity, that concept is really important. When an object is traveling at maximum velocity, it's not accelerating anymore. 
Okay, okay that, that is, is as fast as it, it can get. Yeah. So, so we're going to make acceleration equal to zero. And how do we find acceleration, acceleration from velocity equation? You, you differentiate, differentiate it. Make it equal to zero and t equals two seconds. Okay, so two seconds after, uh, two seconds of time later, um, the velocity particle is at its maximum. Okay, because it's not accelerating anymore. And then part B, find the value of this maximum velocity. Well, we know what value of t is when it re reaches at that maximum velocity. So let's substitute t equals two into the velocity equation. Is it meeting time? Okay, so that's that then, okay? Um, that's how the max velocity. Example three, final example. Displacement of a particle moving in a straight line is given by this. Sketch the displacement time graph, find the maximum displacement from the starting point and describe the motion particle. Right, so this is clearly a negative cubic. And what I need to do is factorise it out so that I can get the t-intercepts. Okay. And the t-intercepts occur when x is equal to zero. You get t equals zero, four minus one, kind of negative time. So we're going to only focus on t equals 0 and t equals 4. So 0, 4, and that will be x, which will be displacement in meters, and that's time in seconds. Okay. Now, now normally, normally a negative, negative uh, cubic uh, takes on uh, a shape that looks well, well positive cubic looks like that, negative, negative cubic looks like that. that. So, so what we're going to have is we're going to have a little bit of a curve like, like this. Now, now we, we can't assume that it's going to be symmetrical around, around two because it's a cubic. Okay, we can assume that with gravity. Can't assume that at this moment in time. Anyway. I've sketched the graph between uh, um, zero and four seconds, and there it is. Now, to find maximum, maximum displacement, when an object acts maximum, maximum displacement, it basically means that it cannot, um, the value of displacement is not getting any larger. So it actually, it's not gonna speed up or it's, it has no velocity at that point, okay? So a maximum displacement, the velocity is equal to zero. Okay. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate my equation and remember I'm going to say it's a max when dx over dt is equal to zero. So I'm going to make this equal to zero. And if you use a calculator to solve or you can use a classic formula, you get d equals 2.53 seconds. And if we then use that, Remember, that's the value of t where it's at maximum displacement. To find the maximum displacement, you've got to put that t value back into the x equation. And when you do that, you'll get a value of 13.128 or 13.1 meters to 3SF. Okay? So, we're, we're using, using pure mass here with velocity differentiation, you know, maximum, maximum displacement, maximum value of a, of a curve, okay, and, um, you know, yeah, essentially stationary points, point, isn't it? Describe, Describe the motion of the particle. particle. So, you can say, um, for 2.53 seconds, the particle accelerates from starting point and 
and move, move the distance. distance. of 13.1 meters, okay, and then it returns to the starting point, arriving four seconds later after the start. So, in essence, if we do a quick recap on everything that we've done, uh, we have to obviously remember how to get from one concept to another using differentiation. Also, the elements of pure mass with regards to sketching quadratics. How do we find when something is in steady at C or S when velocity is equal to zero or dx over dt is equal to zero? We then looked at examples where we found what maximum velocity is and what happens at maximum velocity, acceleration is equal to zero. And then we looked at an example where we had to find when an object at maximum displacement. Again, velocity equal to zero, and we looked at that. So, so take the question at the end here, and that's the end of this video. video.